new guitar. Actually, it's not so new as you could probably tell by looking at it. Uh, this thing was made in the 1930s. I'm not exactly sure what year, uh, but, but definitely in the 30s up by Harlan Brothers out of Chicago, Illinois. And the uh, Harlan Brothers were actually the guys that secured the patent for inventing the first uh, steel guitar. So, uh, you know, pretty cool company to be sure. And uh, this is a little parlor guitar that they made back then. And uh, I'm absolutely falling in love with it. So I want to tell you a little bit about it. Uh, it's got a, a 13 um, inch lower bow here and only an eight inch waist. I mean, it's super thin right here. You can see I can reach my hand across it uh, just to give you kind of a, a reference of, of how small this thing is. And from here to here is about nine, nine and a half inches or so. Uh, it's a commonly called a, a 12th fret guitar because the the neck and the body are joined right here at the 12th fret and um, uh, lends itself to, to finger picking pretty well because the space between the strings um, is is wide enough to really get in there and uh, and pick with your fingers and uh, and you can see it's got the slotted headstock here which is really cool uh, I'll give you a good look at it the the body is uh, solid birch it's birch all the way around we got birch top sides and the back so uh, it's a tobacco burst finish I really love the back of this guitar check this out it's got you can see the real cool uh, grain here on the on the birch and uh, this neck I don't know if this is going to show up super well but this thing is incredibly stout I mean th this thing you know you're holding on to something when you're playing this guy uh, it took me a little bit to get used to playing this size neck because my electrics that I play and even my acoustic they have a you know more of a modern thin neck uh, but, you know, after playing this thing and breaking it in for a few days, or breaking me in uh, for a few days, it, it just really kind of felt like home, and I actually liked the larger, uh, the thicker neck. It just, I don't know, you feel like you really got something. But um, don't be fooled by the size of this guitar. This thing, as you heard in the opening piece there, um, it's got some really cool tone. It's got a decent amount of projection as well. So. Um, if you're interested in a parlor guitar, uh, this one came from Steve Chipman at um, VintageParlorGuitars.com and uh, Steve was uh, super helpful in, in helping me get my first parlor guitar. I mean, you, you know, you want some help from somebody that knows what they're doing um, when you're trying to buy a guitar that's, you know, 70, 80 years old because just they come with their problems when they're this age. Yeah, this thing, who knows the history? It could have been, you know, locked away in an attic. It could have been exposed to, you know, some extreme temperature changes and over the years. Um, and what Steve does is he takes the guitar and and makes it playable by today's standards. So even though this is a super old guitar, it plays as well as many that you would pick up uh, in any music store. Um, and, and to tell you what he did specifically to this one, um, he, he did a lot of work on the fretboard. He radiused the fretboard, which means he put a, a gentle curve in there to, uh, to make it more playable. Um, and most of your fretboards are radiused on, on any guitar. And um, so you, you may not even feel it. It's such a slight radius, and, and this is just a tiny piece of that radius. But anyway, so he put the curve back in there, and, and it's very playable as a result. I'm pretty sure he um, polished up the frets and, and dressed them and everything. It looks like a really nice fret job uh, on this. Um, and then reset the neck. And the neck is probably the most crucial part of this because you know getting that angle right has just got to be a tremendously difficult task. Uh, particularly on these old guitars, I'm sure they have their, their issues to work on. But anyway, you did a great job. I love this guitar, and uh, if you're interested in any kind of parlor guitar, man, you, you really should uh, should talk to Steve. He he uh, seems to know a heck of a lot about it, and seems to come into some pretty cool ones. Uh, this is the one that I ended up with. Uh, I, I'm loving it, you know, absolutely loving it. So I wanted to share it with you guys, um, and just tell you, if you're playing blues, you got to think, man. I mean, back in the 20s, the 30s, uh, the guys that I love to listen to, like your Blind Blake, Blind Boy Fuller, and you know, probably a ton of other blind guys. Um, you know, this is the kind of stuff that they were playing, and um, and I just really, really enjoy it. Really have, uh, you know, just I can't put it down. I play all the time now, and uh, you know, it's really inspired me to to write some pieces like what I played for you at the beginning. 
um, and, and is really just making me dive into music in the style that, that came out of the 20s and 30s. Uh, that was a cool time for blues and, and Piedmont blues. And um, anyway, just love the, the feel of this thing. It kind of takes me back to, to an earlier time. So um, anyway, I hope you enjoy. And uh, like I said, check Steve out if you, uh, if you got any questions on Parlor Guitar. He's an amazing resource. Thanks.